I think I'm not going to be able to complete my argument, but I will give the structure of my basic argument from the beginning, so I don't have to worry or stress myself. My basic argument is that societal reconciliation in what I would term as symphiliosis, i.e. the transcendence and transformations of the divisions and polarizations that result from the conflict, or better, the ethnic state conflict, it is necessary to proceed with a comprehensive transformation of the ethnic social inequality, exclusionary and discriminatory structures and practices, ideologies, and discourses in society. Such a goal does not mean postponing the process of symphiliosis for some distant future after the event of solution, but it should be an immediate task of civic action initiatives seeking to implement a settlement in Cyprus or, in the absence of a settlement, finding ways of working for reconciliation of Cypriot people. As I could elsewhere, reconciliation, in the narrow sense, refers to dealing with the specific pain and suffering of the victims of political violence. Note the terminology, political violence, which involves inter-ethnic and intra-ethnic violence. I am covering the historical events surrounding such violent acts in the form of some legal, non-legal or other measures, for example, the Commission for Truth and Reconciliation or other method for transitional justice. However, reconciliation in the wider sense uh, takes a longer term approach to social, cultural, so, uh, psychological, ideological and political processes. And these are equally crucial. And I think we shouldn't take a narrow approach alone. We need this wider perspective. Um, there is a strong case for arguing that the process ought to be discussed before a settlement and initiatives uh, should be given beforehand, but they can only be truly operational during and after a settlement, if there is one, of course. Uh, moreover, the notion of reconciliation must be properly adapted to the wider notion of attempting to overcome and transcend what the way we have internalized uh, the, the Cyprus problem, as we like to call it. So societal reconciliation as opposed to regime or elite reconciliation, I think it was Errol Kaimak who first coined this idea of, of regime reconciliation, uh, should thus be seen as an essential and integral part of, of our attempt to, to resolve the problem, but also in the absence of resolution, something must be done so that the people can get closer to as such, it must be perceived as a range of policies and social processes that enable the transformation of the results of historic conflicts and wars, uh, which are the driving force in uh, uh, which engender institutional societal change in attitudes, perceptions, and practice. That's the basic idea. And I, I think that for reconciliation to be meaningful in the context of Cyprus, we must undo what defines the exclusionary core that results from the chronic division and ongoing conflict and non-conflict that is taking place, that denies human rights, denies equal participation, and that denies decision-making processes in the state structures. So a number of necessary changes that are structurally limited, of course, because we really are in this situation. You, you saw what you, you have to do to enter this building alone. You realize that there are barriers to overcome. And uh, what we have to do is overcome the, the, the what de facto divides us. And, de and this defines, in other words, the limits of our action, uh, that what, what can be achieved prior to or without a comprehensive settlement. It has become a matter of common sense, I think, in current studies of conflict transformation, conflict resolution, that what is required is a multi-level, multi-tier transformation in society, which at least I, can, I have located four core dimensions. One is personal, and this involves physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual dimensions. The second is relational, communication, understanding, deal with fears and hopes in human and social relationships. The third is structural, which refers to the root causes and social conditions that give rise, rise to the results from the conflict, chronic divisions of society, the mechanisms and processes. The fourth one is cultural, you understand what we mean by culture in the wider sense, and the fifth one is ideological. So, having said this, what, you, what we have to show, we have to realize, is the opposite of this, which is basically piecemeal reconciliation, which are small positive steps in the right direction. They contribute, and they are gestures of goodwill and action. And there are 
infinite numbers of such ministers. And I just want to remind my earlier intervention about uh, the way in which civil society is depicted in Cyprus. And that's why I took a very, very strong stance. And I still would defend the fact that we have a civil society, even if it's compared to very differently from other types of civil society, such as Northern Ireland. As such, I am in favor of all measures, whether they are mutual or whether they are unilateral, whether they are large or small. Um, at the same time, we have to be clear that initiatives may well be well intentioned, even well thought out, but may actually be badly executed, not properly uh, rooted in the Cypriot realities, or may actually have the opposite effect and might cause a backlash. So the net result may be not always beneficial for reconciliation in the long run. There are tens of examples, hundreds and maybe thousands of examples of these sort of uh, reconciliation processes. So, but I think that what we need to put forward, to consider now, is the most effective strategy for the Cypriot road to Cypriotosis. And I have a basis for a big, big bang approach to reconciliation that will entail a good deal of mutuality, even if it's not mutual mutuality that is based on, on a kind of a barter-like symmetry. Because we have asymmetrical relations between the two communities. We have asymmetrical relations of other things. But some form of mutuality is really necessary if it's going to have any credence. Um, so it's a strong mutuality of common will to eradicate the structures and practices that are causing mistrust, as well as reforming the social forces themselves, uh, those which are benefiting from the status quo. At the same time, I would argue for an asymmetrical approach to various initiatives that may, be, may reflect different types of activities with different meanings for each community. So, what is required is a close scrutiny of the different levels of social life in, a country, in our country to locate and eradicate the various obstacles to symphiliosis. This means reconstructing the regimes that will emerge are from, from a reunification, or if there is no agreement, reconstructing the regime in anticipation for a future solution. So it should be based on cooperation rather than confrontation and fragmentation and polarization, and B, it should, the, at the various levels of social, political, economic, and cultural life, the processes should lead towards cooperation, and this process must become hegemonic. The question then is, how do we get there? What sort of transitional program do we develop so that there is a common and effective civic participation in the process that will lead to the institutionalization, a kind of a societal embeddedness of symphiliosis? Um, I think that uh, given the very limited time I have in the next uh, three minutes or so, it's left for me, two minutes that's left for me, uh, all I can do is give you the headlines of the issues that I think should be addressed. I mean, you can read the paper after it is nicely done. I think that what we discuss in this conference as the ethical reconciliation is, is basically the idea, if we go back to Hannah Arendt's reflections on violence, which are instructive, we have reached a level of technical development that basically we need to go beyond the effectiveness of, of conflict doesn't take us anywhere. And I think this is Arisita's proposal for global ethical reconciliation is premised precisely on this, what Flores insistence earlier on of, the, of looking beyond the ethnic lens to the wider process of otherness should also be integrated. And I think Errol Kaimax insisted that, hey, what are the what is the agency of change? All three should be united in, a, in, in the search for the Cypriot road to reconciliation, the Cypriot road to symbiosis. What I will do now is give you a very brief heading of the maps that I, I have begun looking at, and my project at PRIO is precisely trying to do that. So if we look at the different points of that divide, I, while we're dealing with the contacts between Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, this line, the green line, and what it means, the separate lines, the operation of the green, green line regulation, how it affects the bureaucracy that's intervened, questions about citizenship, you know, who can acquire citizenship? Why? Uh, racial, racial incidents and racial discrimination, which is you just cross the checkpoint. You see there to cross over, it says Greek Cypriot, Turkey Cypriot. You go to uh, further down, education was, talk, was talked about earlier. What sort of education? What kind of educational system? I just want here to flag out one recent initiative when, we, when the 
circular web that, uh, that was sent out by the trade, the Greek Cypriot Trade Union was actually met with resistance. We put a complaint to the equality body, and the equality body ruled that, hey, you can't actually discriminate, you can't actually stop uh, the Turkish Cypriots from visiting the schools. It's not the end of the 